Hello and welcome to the show. I'm here on BeamNG Drive with another Downhill Chaos. And I start today with a Renault 5 Turbo. This is one with the, the biggest engine possible. I think it's called the Renault 5 Maxi engine. I think that's what it was called uh, on here. So yeah, going, going to give this car a go down the down the mountain. Now this car is actually quite an interesting one. Not only does it sound different to everything else, it's got some different engine noises anyway. Uh, it does have tremendous turbo lag. That is something new. I've never really uh, experienced that too much on this game. I presume it's fairly accurate to what the car would be like uh, in real life. It is rear-wheel drive and it is also mid-engined, uh, which makes it kind of quite difficult to, to control, in all honesty. Uh, around this course, it really does like to spin out if you're not careful. It's incredibly easy to try and take a corner a little bit too fast or to hit a bump a little bit wrong uh, and then have the car sort of go round in a circle. It's also possible to roll it. I haven't seen the Mound of Doom caused too many problems recently, but that one I just just tried to take a, a little bit too much sort of the inside of the corner, clipped it and sure enough the uh, the Renault 5 fell over. Uh, it is also a, quite a low car, uh, it's not it's not the, the, the rally version of this vehicle, it's not got lovely uh, rallying suspension if you like, which means that it can have some problems with the bumps. For example, uh, I, I just got on the bumps and couldn't slow the car down in time. Uh, again, more, more very slow speed. This is not as spectacular with some of the rear-wheel drive cars. That when you try and take a corner, it, it just sort of ends up going around in a circle. It's not the most spectacular of ways uh, to fail on this particular course. I may have overshot a corner a little bit. If, if you weren't kind of sliding, if the car wasn't oversteering, it could be quite understeery. At times, it was it was one of those that you had a choice of either lots of oversteer or lots of understeer. I've slightly flattened a, uh, a Renault 5, got things wrong into the first corner, uh, just tried to turn in a little bit too early and then got the back end sort of sliding. Amazingly, the car is still working absolutely fine. Normally when you do that, you'll have bent something in the steering or you'll have bent a wheel. Amazingly, despite all of that damage, the, <laughs> all of the wheels were pointing the right direction and the car was still working. I wasn't expecting it to be still working. There we get the understeer going on. I, <laughs> I was going quite slowly on that corner, and it just it, it, there was no turning uh, whatsoever. So you kept kind of compromise between sort of getting the back out a little bit of the car uh, and not not trying to spin the car out, etc. Again, another big impact with it. just just the back of the car getting away from me. But if you hit the front of this car in the right place, it didn't actually damage the steering, so <laughs> the car can still keep going. But if you hit it sort of dead on on the front, I guess there's quite a lot of crumple zone in, in the middle of the front bumper and where the engine used to be in the Renault 5s. Uh, so yeah, you could get away with it taking all the damage there. But of course, if, you know, if you clip it on, on one of the wheels, yeah, it's going to break it. But uh, you could get away with quite a lot of damage on the front of the car and still have it working. Which, I mean, that's that's some pretty damn heavy damage to the front of this vehicle. Again, be, being a road car, the bumps did cause a few problems with it. I, I like how on that one there, on the landing, it's just the door we broke. The rest of the car, absolutely fine. There is absolutely no damage under the rest of the car on that. Just the door that uh, <laughs> took all of the damage. Anyway, after a little while, I did get a, a clean run with this car. It was quite a nice vehicle to drive. I mean, it's not really built for this sort of terrain, I think. It's, it doesn't quite have the, the suspension, shall we say, to deal, to deal with these kind of roads. It does have quite a lot of turbo lag, which out of some of these slow corners could be a little bit uh, of a pain. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad going. Uh, yeah, it's not, not a bad car though. It wasn't, it wasn't horribly, horribly twitchy. You'll, you'll see as we come down here. You're, how much the car kind of bounces around, which means that as you're trying to put the power down out of some of the corners, it does feel like it struggles a little bit. Especially this one here that, that we're coming up to around the tree hairpin. It's very bumpy on the exit. Uh, and you just, it just can't quite use as much power as you want. It doesn't feel like it gets quite as much power down onto the road. And this second jump is always scary in the road cars. Luckily, the Renault is fast enough 
so we can clear it with relative ease. And then we just got to make sure we get it stopped for the next corner run a little bit wider than I would have liked. But you don't want to really be going out quite that wide uh, if you can help it. Brakes aren't too bad in this car, actually, I have to say. And around the final corner, and it is a run across the line with the Renault. And then we may have bumped into a few rocks and bent the wheel. That's, that's, not, that's not, the, not a good angle to have a wheel at there. Uh, otherwise, it survived the course very, very well. Yeah, it gets chucked around by the bumps a little bit, and it is quite oversteer. You have to be very, very careful with this car if you want to survive, because it is a very oversteer vehicle. Up next, yep, I've got a golf cart, because why the hell not? Uh, <laughs> it's actually been out for, for a while, this, this golf cart. I've been meaning to use it. I finally just remembered uh, this week. It's got the impossible gearbox, or whatever the thing's called, uh, so it's actually got six gears and has decent enough speed I say decent enough speed, it's not the quickest vehicle by any means that we've had down this course. It is rear wheel drive, uh, so oversteer, well I, I was slightly worried that it could be sort of oversteering and stuff, but that's not the biggest problem with uh, <laughs> with this vehicle it only has brakes on the rear, there is only brakes on the rear wheels of this vehicle as far as I am aware, which means trying to slow down is effectively like just holding the handbrake. Not good. It's, it's, it's not really quite uh, <laughs> what you want. I was also worried about perhaps a little bit, it being a little bit unstable, it's very narrow. Uh, that's not too much of a problem. While that time there, I did get things wrong and we've parted in a ditch and uh, it's, it's well and truly stuck. It wasn't too bad for falling over. It occasionally go up on onto its side, such as there, just, <laughs> just about managed to save it. Uh, and in doing so, again, it put me towards a rock, and, and then we do fall over. Uh, it it would go on its side. It was never it was never had massive problems really with uh, with rolling this thing over. It was the brakes that were the real problem with this, an absolute <laughs> really serious problem. Trying to get this thing slowed down, as again I get it a little bit wrong, and it's fallen over, and now we, it didn't. I don't know. Sort of carried on a lot of momentum on that one there to, to go back onto its side. You're trying to slow this thing down is so so difficult, and this corner here is by far the worst because when you slam on the rear brakes, you, they, they go into lock, and then that's just like holding on the handbrake, which is not what we want. It's not very good for for control. And if you don't slam on the on on the brakes, you don't have very much stopping force at all. Like most of or quite a lot of braking is done by the front wheels in every car because of weight transfer. So if you've only got brakes on the rear of the thing, you really struggle getting slowed down. And the second jump was causing quite a lot of problems for, <laughs> for the golf, golf cart, sorry. I, I'm not 100% sure, I mean, it's not that it was so slow that it struggled getting across it. It's just that whenever it did get across it, the la it could never get the landing right on the other side. It would just bounce around sort of randomly. I, I mean, I'm guessing it's just because it's not got suspension, or well, not got the suspension that, that's really capable of dealing with it. I was carrying on this time thinking, well, I mean, the rolls kind of acted as brakes. Unfortunately, the steering had been broken from the uh, from the roll across the jump. So yeah, I didn't manage to complete the run uh, on that time. Took a bit, took a bit of time getting used to uh, to driving this thing, primarily because the brakes are just horrible. Trying to try to get this thing slowed down was not at all easy. Yeah, it's a little bit narrow, uh, and, and going up on two wheels certainly uh, was quite easy. I, the, the actual falling over wasn't too bad. It was actually pretty good um, to drive, in all honesty. If the brakes had been sensible, or if the brakes had had, if it had front brakes, I think this would have been quite good. I mean, we didn't struggle, surprisingly, we didn't struggle too too much. I didn't feel like it struggled too much over the bumps, which is odd. Can, apart from the, apart from that second jump, the rest of the course it dealt with very, very well. It was just the, getting it slowed down for each and every corner was a real pain. I mean, it's not certainly nowhere near the most powerful vehicle that we've had, so it was never going to be massively fast. Uh, but it dealt with everything that, uh, that, that the course threw at it, I mean, coming out of the tree hairpin. Yeah, it got chucked around a little bit. I guess it's also very, very light as well, in comparison at least to the other stuff that we've drove. But it dealt with the dealt with the bumps. This was the problem area that I could, couldn't do anything about as we uh, go across the jump. It, it is going to, it's either going to fall over, or if it doesn't fall over, you can't really stop it for the next corner. And since this time, well, the tumbling over 
kind of helped to slow the thing down. I thought, bugger it, let's just carry on. I it just, it just couldn't do that jump. It got thrown around so much on the landing. I think about the two times it did do the jump, I then couldn't stop it for the next corner. So, yeah, that, that bit there, not particularly nice. But the golf cart is across the line. I was actually quite surprised by how well it drove. Up until that second jump, I was quite surprised. I thought it was going to be really very, very horrible down here. And it wasn't. It wasn't completely terrible. Uh, Damage-wise, yeah, quite a lot of damage was done just from the just from the one roll. But it wasn't completely hopeless, which surprised me. But that second jump, it didn't like. It really didn't like. Our third and final vehicle today, yep, it does look like a fairly normal D-Series pickup truck. However, this one has an electric drivetrain, basically. It is an electric version of the D the D series, which intrigued me. I had no idea how this one was was going to fare. Now, I don't think we've ever had the completely st stock version of this truck. We've had the big off-road version, certainly was driven down here, but never had sort of the, the more road-going, more perhaps normal version of the truck. So yeah, I thought it'd be interesting to see how this one would do. Now on the first attempt I messed up with the selecting of parts and it still has a gearbox which made the thing very really bad to drive. It, it shouldn't it shouldn't have a, a normal gearbox with the electric power power unit because it, it, it didn't really like that that's too much. I did get most of the way before clipping the inside of a corner and managing to roll the pickup truck which is which is fairly easily done. Uh, in all honesty, uh, yeah, we've seen a few vehicles uh, end up on their roof there as we kind of spin and slide our way uh, down a hill before eventually coming to a rest. So on the next run, I uh, fixed the the gearbox, if you like, the drive. Got got the got a single gear one, and it was much much nicer to drive. Power delivery was much better. However, I got things slightly wrong. <laughs> Turn one tried to carry a little bit too much speed into that particular corner. And now we're stuck on our side. It's, it's not, we're not going to be able to move that. Turn one was a little bit of a pain. And I think I figured out the reason why, only when I'm back to watching this. What was happening is I guess I was hitting a point at which the car started very rapidly picking up speed just at the moment that I wanted to turn in the corner. And it was fairly slow accelerating up until that point. So I was kind of coming into the corner sort of flat out and then all of a sudden picking up speed and then realizing, nope, you can't make the corner. So yeah, I may have smacked the wall a few times uh, in, in the first quarter before realizing. Now this was another vehicle that really struggled with the bumps. And as strange as it is to say, I reckon this had more problems than the Golf Cart and the Renault 5, despite this being designed to deal with perhaps a bit rougher terrain. This really, really did struggle. At that time, I think I managed to break some steering somewhere, and it, it just refused to turn the corner, and now it's sort of a, a little bit stuck in a tree, sort of. But yeah, this really no, it didn't like the bumps. It really got thrown around. Again, you, you see there, it got, got a lot of air time off what well, aren't, aren't really the biggest of bumps. Uh, I guess it's got very soft suspension, and it likes bouncing the truck around, and it will throw it off course. In that case, it, it just threw it a little bit wide. I clipped a tree and had quite <laughs> quite severe consequences. From that angle, it doesn't look too bad on the damage wire from the other side. It's absolutely wrecked. Yeah, for some reason, this really, really did not like the bumps. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why. Got far too much airtime over that jump. If, if you've got that much airtime, you know something bad is about to happen. <laughs> you, you don't want to be taking that particular line. The quickest route over that first jump is to not jump at all. If you, if you stay to the left of it, you don't actually get that much airtime. Uh, over the second jump again, having, having small bits of problems, just about ma managing to get the, the truck slowed down there. I then run a, a little bit wide, and although you can barely see it, that slight brush on a rock was enough to bend one of the wheels up completely. I thought I'd lost the wheel uh, when, when looking at this. I spin the camera around. Nope, the wheel's just hidden up there. I was going to finish the run until the wheel decided to pop out and then completely remove all steering that I had. And it, it couldn't have picked a, a worse time for the wheel to suddenly start working again and steer me directly into a rock. And then we go tumbling down the <laughs> down the cliff. It's a long way down. Surprisingly, again, this is another vehicle that actually managed to just about hold its shape together. Normally when they go down here, 
the, you really hit the bottom and there will be just a, a, a cube of metal. This, I guess on this impact, or on, on this slide, a lot of the energy was lost in, in sort of rolling and towards the end we didn't quite get the same splattering on the trees. So it's, you can still see that it's just about a, a pickup truck. Anyway, on to the final, or the, 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 the clean run if you like. A little bit of a weird way to get this vehicle started actually. It doesn't really like setting off. In, in all honesty, you have to kind of hold the handbrake on, rev the motor up to sort of eight, 9,000 RPM and then let it go, and then it'll get started properly. Uh, it doesn't really like getting moving from very from very low RPMs. I'm not, in, I'm not entirely sure why, it might be something to do with this game not quite liking uh, <laughs> this sort of vehicle, because electric cars are supposed to be very good from, from low RPMs, but uh, yeah, this vehicle this vehicle struggled sort of coming out of the hairpins. It didn't really like it. Once it does get going, it is pretty damn quick. And that's what was catching me out in the first corner. Around the rest of this route, uh, you never really get up to the same sort of speeds. But yeah, it could pick up speed very, very rapidly and all of a sudden pick up a lot of speed. So it, was quite it would be quite scary on a faster course. Here, you just about get away with it because it never quite, quite really gets going. It does get chucked around quite a lot on the bumps. It has quite a lot of air time. I mean, that's that's not a good. It's not good to be approaching a corner with the wheels in the air and bouncing around. Although it does have just about enough speed to get over the second of the jump, and it's a much nicer landing uh, over that particular place. I was making sure I got it slowed down this time for the second to last corner. Then there is just one more corner to go for the Jeep this time. Not clipping any rocks, so we have all of the all of the working steering around the final corner and then just a run towards the line. It's not the quickest, the most powerful of vehicles that we've had down here. As we kind of do a half roll off the uh, off the building. Uh, it's just sort of the, the putting the power down at the very slow speed corners that kills it a little bit. Once it does get going, it's it's perfectly okay. But it did struggle around a couple of the corners. Again, only damage really done to this was after it crossed the finish line. It survived the course. If you didn't have problems with it chucking you about uh, over some of the bumps, it survives the course perfectly, perfectly well. We move on to the times, and it is a decent time from the Renault 5. In all honesty, I thought it might struggle a little bit. Uh, down here. I thought it might have been quite a bit slower, but a 122.8, that's fairly respectable actually. I thought it was going to be quite a bit slower with how much it struggled putting the power down. But yeah, that's, that's pretty good. It's around the same time as the Jet Cobbett, the four-wheel drive version of the Pigeon. It goes quicker than the uh, the Vauxhall Vectra. That's, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's a, that's a fairly respectable time. Further down, we find the Electric D-Series, a 132 Point six. That's quite slow, and that loses so much time just trying to get out of the slow corners. That's that's why it's so far down. It's slower than the uh, the two rock crawlers. It just can't put the power down out of the corners that well. And the golf cart, uh, that's just down to brakes. It, it doesn't have well, it has them, but on the rear wheels, which is horrible. <laughs> Basically, yeah. If that had if that had four brakes, if that had front front brakes, I think that would uh, be a, a fair bit quicker. Anyway, there we go. That is it for this video, guys. So uh, thank you very much for watching. If you want to have a go with the mods that I've used in this video, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, you can find them and download them yourself. However, until next time, uh, goodbye.